All right, I'm Sam Passy. I'm with UNA County Library, which is in Vernal, Utah. For those who aren't familiar, um, we're three hours from Moab, about three hours the other direction from Salt Lake, and the other way, four hours from Denver. Um, we're right over the mountain from uh, Grand Junction, Colorado, which is two hours away, which is kind of how this all began for me. Um, back in 20 something, um, I became aware of a, a system called PICA that was in use, developed by Marmot Library Network. And I loved it and I coveted it and I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. Um, because they had this cool thing called record grouping, which we'll get into here in a minute. Um, I think most audience in the room has heard of that. Um, but at the time, Marmot was not really taking new members. And so I didn't have a good way to get access to that. Um, and then, uh, I'll flash forward here a little bit. Okay, before I get for any further, I need to thank Bywater Solutions for their, their uh, sponsorship and scholarship for me to come to this conference. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to be here and represent the good folks of Utah and some of the work that we've done with, uh, with Bywater here. Um, and then another bit of this, um, I am not super techie 20 years ago, maybe I was. I've been in admin land for the last uh, 15 years. Um, so my detail oriented tech skills have kind of gone down um, as has my, my time to dig into the ones and zeros. Is it doing something funny? It looks okay on our end. Okay. All right. Whatever I minimize, I'll have to unminimize in a moment here to get into the live system, but we'll figure that out. Um, anyway, so if you have super technical questions, I'll direct you to uh, probably Mark Noble, who's in the room. Um, and okay, so for me, Aspen's birth date is February 25th, 2019. That's when Mark, who I'd met many years ago at a Marmot users group meeting in Colorado when I began to cover this, um, Mark sent me this message on LinkedIn and basically said, hey, I'm, I'm throwing my shingle out there. Let's do something. Um, the next day, this is what my notebook looked like. And... Um, the next page of it was kind of like, hey, if we do this, what happens if Mark gets hit by a bus or decides to do something else or gets in a different job? Um, what will it be like? And um, so you went to county library, decided to contract with Mark Noble, his company Turning Leaf Technologies, which was Mark, um, to develop what would become Aspen Discovery, uh, which was itself a fork off of PICA product that Mark had worked on previously. And I'm not gonna get into the, the deep details of that. I'll let him tell his story tomorrow. Um, but this is open source software. And what's amazing is that in two years time, we went from this to, uh, to what we're gonna show you here in a few minutes and what so many of you are, um, are starting on to. But I remember having all these discussions with my library board, with my staff about, um, we use Koha as our ILS and it does a great job, except there's some polish that we felt was missing. And we had seen what was possible um, in Grand Junction and, and thought, you know, that would be really, really cool. While that's going on, those conversations happened on the other side of the operation. Um, our library runs a regional history center, a community archives. There are three full-time staff members there. The place has been around for about 40 years. And for a good 15, 20 years, the staff there have digitized hundreds, well, not hundreds of thousands, but, but tens of thousands of photographs, historic documents and other archives. And we partnered with the University of Utah in a regional digital library network called the Mountain West Digital Library. It's really cool. It's a great resource. No one locally knew about it. Um, unless you were starting 
from a university portal, which most of our community members and soccer moms and dads aren't. Um, it took like seven, eight clicks through three or four websites to get to our local stuff and, and who, what average person looking at their own community's history would think that the university three hours away has their community's history. Not too many. Um, so um, this is a screenshot from the Facebook page from a, a local man who went through all those hoops and discovered the resources and just started sharing them online. And unfortunately, he didn't tag where he got them from. Um, he would copy and paste metadata that our staff and volunteers created, which is fantastic, except when we had typos in it. Um, but so the, the big challenge was we had this content, but a, a pretty darn good, probably the best ILS there is, the user experience wasn't quite what people expected from Amazon and from different online shopping. So there's a little disconnect. Again, the Koha built-in ILS is, and OPAC is so much better than, than many of the others. Um, but we wanted to finesse it a little bit. So we contracted with Mark, who eventually worked became part of Bywater Solutions. And, and what we wanted to do was look at ways to make things, searches relevant to integrate e-content from Overdrive, from Canopy, from a few others that have come on over the years. We had all these homegrown databases for genealogy. Um, we had a cemetery index that had, you know, three or four Excel files and a Defunct, defunct database. We had a newspaper index and, and some of these other things. Um, we wanted to bring it all together. Um, I mentioned record grouping. This is kind of what that means. Uh, well, so I don't know how many of you have catalogs, have more than one person cataloging, and you might have, if you're a big system, a whole bunch of records for one item, you know, and there's two or three copies that got attached to that edition. And there's two or three copies that are, you know, the think of something like Pride and Prejudice. Um, in Koha, there could be a whole bunch of different records for all the different versions of that, which a lot of the patrons don't, don't care about. Um, just show me, I wanna know what books you have. Um, so Aspen does that. It, it's able to group things, group the records together and then group things by by format, it's an attempt to ferberize, and you can ask someone more technically minded than I am what that really means. Um, but it's some of the magic that makes things awesomeness happen. Um, Aspen allows for combined searching, um, and we'll get into the live system in a minute. But um, this part of the the search is coming from the libraries catalog. So there's mark records for those things. This part, these are coming from our photos that we scanned, but are hosted at the University of Utah. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit here for those in the back. We've got an obituary showing up in that result. Come on, computer. We have a curated list that staff members have made. Is there anyone here that's never seen a demo from Aspen or has never heard of this? This is brand new to them, I'm curious. Okay, a couple of us. All right, great. So um, please feel free to see me on the side. And if there's anything that's like, that I'm glossing over and you're like, okay, no, sit down. We need to talk about this. We'll do that. Um, some of the key features are, if you're in a general catalog search, there's an explore more bar that's pulling from those other integrated sources and, and things. Um, all right, I gotta get into the live system. Let's see, minimized that. Hang on a second guys, I'm on an unfamiliar, okay, stop share.
Okay. Ah. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm, I'm a little rusty at this. I shouldn't be. Um, guess we'll do this. You guys get earnestness from me. That's the that's the emotional moment, so you can all bond and relate to my to me up here. Um, thank you. I needed that. I'll pay you later. Okay. All right. So this is this is our life system. Um, when we when we started this um, building on what what was existing in Pika and forking it. Um, we wanted to immediately have the ability to build to build websites and things. I I don't have a technical staff to speak of. Um, most of our librarians are, are homegrown um, up and comers who are doing a fantastic job. Um, but we wanted something that was easy. We were using a variety of WordPress sites before. Wanted that simplicity. Uh, we wanted to be able to integrate our events calendar, which comes from Library Market. Um, so those were some of the first couple of things on the wish list. Did I see a hand? No? Okay. I saw a hand. Um, we wanted to be able to feature resources and um, catalog the community, kind of. But I'm, I'm just going to start the basic search. Um, Okay, Doris Burton, she's a nice lady, local author, um, wrote a number of, of books, um, which our library owns the copyright to. One of the things we wanted to do was to be able to put that, she wrote local history books, wanted to put that online. And so Aspen has the ability for you to um, upload, upload those sorts of uh, things and then people can either view or, or download. Um, in this case, we uploaded them as PDFs. There's no, one thing to understand about our instance is there's no underlying separate institutional repository or, or digital asset management tool. That's something that we're talking about. On that side of the operation, we're kind of like that kid that's grown, but is still sleeping in his parents' basement. You know, we're like, should we do that? Shouldn't we? It's so nice and easy to keep everything here inside Aspen, this attached PDFs, but we know that that won't scale up. Um, and so that's uh, some sort of Omeka or, or some repositories in our near future. Um, this is a good search, search to show you some of the neat features. This, um, this is using some of the information from uh, the MARC record and presenting it, I think, in a very attractive manner. Um, we can see some of the other resources from the archives and things that show up in this Explore More. Um, you know, we're slowly adding some of her other books to the what's available for download. Um, so we wanted we wanted to let this be our our homepage, and so it it does that. Um, we've used it for partnership exhibits with the local um, museum. We had a traveling Smithsonian exhibit. Um, the museum doesn't have a web presence to speak of, and so um, I basically took their brochure and used Web Builder and Aspen to create a, a little website, web page for them. Um, in this case, most of these are just hard links, hand-coded. Um, okay, this is a better example here. 
Um, Aspen lets you create collective spotlights and it really gives you granularity over highlighting things. Um, you can develop placards, um, which are kind of like little pop-ups that'll um, show you what one of those is. Not that anyone's gonna search for Mango languages, but if they do use that search term, these little placards come up and, and you're gonna hear more of that in depth tomorrow. So that's about all you're gonna get on placards right now. Um, show you real quick. So this is our Code Club page. And um, we wanted to highlight some of the books that we have in our collection and related to Code Club. So with Aspen, you're able to create these collection spotlights in a variety of ways. In this case, we, I ran a search, um, limited it by the item type, and then, um, was able to collect, create that spotlight. Um, this is pulling our calendar entries from Library Market. Um, let's show you what, whoops, what that looks like. So now we're in a site external from Aspen. Um, right now, the communication is, is kind of one way. Aspen can help you search. It's indexed our calendar events, but at the moment you can't, um, you don't have that other direction of traffic. You can't make those reservations for rooms or for classes within within Aspen. We hope that that's coming, and that's a limitation more from the library market vendor than it is from from anything with Aspen. Um, whoops. Okay. Back here. You guys want to see how you make one of those cool collection spotlights? Um, one of the neat things about Aspen is it's totally web-based. I don't want you to remember me. Um, it's never. The um, administration interface, it's talking to whatever your underlying ILS is to pull your credentials. You can set permissions however, however you'd like. Um, and, and then, you know, like Koha, it's got all kinds of um, all kinds of settings and things like that that you can get into. Um, but it's running, a, creating a new widget or a new search is or um, browse category is as easy as running a search. In this case, dogs. My dog adoption month is coming up. Scroll down. So you all get seasick watching me scroll. And um, I can hit create spotlight, give it a name, dogs. Um, and then um, and then I can add that to one of my one of my pages. Um, just kind of on a high level. I'm not gonna save anything today, but just to just give you an idea for how this works. Um, the web builder part of Aspen uses um, some columns and cells to let you add content. So like this page is calling from a YouTube video a little block, text block. Um, I, can, I can call forms up. This is a collection spotlight that it's getting from another collection spotlight, similar to the one I just created. Um, if I wanted to edit that, I click that button. Then I tell it what source it is. Um, and this is things like PDFs, images. A lot of these things are things that I, I would previously have uploaded to Aspen. Um, in the case of that collection spotlight, I choose collection spotlight and then I choose whichever one it was. I hit save and then that, that appears. Now you can also use that to create um, collection spotlights and code for those that you can embed on other sites. Again, I'm not that technical, so ask someone else. Um, questions so far, I've gone through things quickly. None. Okay, let me just get back down in here and um, 
There's oh. nothing from the YouTube chat yet, but you did get a compliment on your shirt, so. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes, and I, I should. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I tell people I'm on the take. I got a, a free T-shirt, so, you know, I'm biased. You got to take me with a grain of salt. Um, where did I go? Oh, um, okay, so um, our, our pandemic story is, is it? Um, so for our, our regional history center, they had totally relied on people coming into their center physically, perusing their archives. That no longer became an option with uh, Aspen, I mean, excuse me, no longer became an option with, with COVID and the pandemic. And um, so they have thousands of these clippings files that have all kinds of things that you could think of, newspaper clippings, random documents. But back in the day, if the library staff came across something, in this case on the William and Mary Sidaway house or the Sidaway family, they'd they'd shove whatever that clipping is into this folder. And the names of those folders were, were the, and, and they had a paper list, an index of the names of those folders and, and topical or, or by name. And that was how people accessed the archives basically up until last year. Um, but there had been previously created mark records for these that no one really used those very much. Um, it was a little hard for people to get their mind around what we were describing with these catalog records. It's a folder, but what's in it? Is it really relevant to me? And so the workflow would be, um, I would go to this history center. I would tell them the topic that I wanted. And then the staff would go and like find things for me. And I'd end up with this pile of boxes and folders on the desk to go through. Um, meanwhile, there was a, um, they had a couple of volunteers that needed some projects and they had one of these folders that they were letting people look at walk off. And so they used that and said, hey, we've got to scan these. We've got to have some kind of backup in case something walks off. But they didn't have the concept. Uh, and this project happened. I didn't know about it. You know, they were they were just doing it. I found out about it after the fact. I was like, wait, you're telling me. We just closed the doors to the public. And I said, you're telling me that your bread and butter, you have scanned already. And I just heard from Mark about how we could attach PDFs to, to records in Aspen. And like the next day, started people um, on putting records or, or attaching items, PDFs and things to, um, to Aspen. So, um, so we did that for a lot of our folders. Um, is it away? house. Okay, so there's Sidaway House. And, you know, it, it's pulling the summary from the, the mark record, whatever we have in there and the subject terms. So the, the marks become useful. Um, and I can upload different, um, different files to it. So now, it became a lifeline during the pandemic for people to be able to, to use that work that had already been done and see the clipping file that previous to that had only been available physically on site. I mean, there's all kinds of random things here. This is someone's research, some genealogy stuff, a national register nomination for the, the house. It's not Again, it's not a digital archive, so we don't have all the metadata on all those things like we probably ought to and maybe we should at some point. But for right now, it, I think we have 2,500 of these clipping files. It almost immediately let us put those online available. And even if the staff is being the intermediary on the phone or on Zoom or whatever, they can, they can share these, these resources with patrons. Um, We got a call from, uh, um, I think that's how it is. We got a call from uh, the Prison Bureau in Oklahoma. And they said, hey, we've got a scanning project going on that we totally thought was a scam when we first got those calls. 
prisons in Oklahoma scanning yearbooks, did some research, found out it was legitimate, started sending them um, our, our uh, yearbooks and um, they scanned those and we were able to, to put those, um, put a portion of those online. So, you know, we have yearbooks from the 1940s. We're a one high school community and a lot of the people that were um, featured in these yearbooks still, still live in town. Um, so this has become like a huge PR thing for us. Um, people can look at their grandparents' yearbooks right now. Um, it led to a conversation with the school district and we have um, permission and copyright clearance for anything until the last five years. So there's a five-year embargo. Um, I think this is pretty cool. And again, it's building on the work you've already done with COHAR, whatever your ILS is, to catalog these and to put those search terms in there. And, and now it's making it essentially fully available. Um, handsome looking principal there. Like looking at the hairstyles. Anyway, so the school district had a student police force in our town, which I always find kind of funny. Um, okay. So new life for old Mark records. Um, it's again, to, to add something here, let me just go back and Okay, if I wanna add something and you can set these permissions, you can vary them greatly depending on the staff or the volunteer's role. That, that's a key point is that volunteers can, can use this if you let them. It's, it's not a difficult process. I mean, we have high school and even middle school kid volunteers that have helped us do some of this stuff. Um, but if I wanted to add another another yearbook, make sure I'm logged in, I'm logged in. Click on it and come down to the staff view part. And I'm gonna just click upload PDF version, tell it where it lives, give it a title, I hit upload. And as soon as my bandwidth pushes that thing through, it's, it's there and it's available. Um, if I'm working on something and I need to, um, if something goes wrong, I can view that, I can click the links to view in the staff client or the native Koha OPAC, um, which, you know, kind of curious about what does this record look like? So yeah, so this is that high school yearbook record in the Koha OPAC. Um, we used Aspen to, upload its cover, upload the actual yearbook. Um, and then it's gonna suggest, um, again, this, this is Aspen doing this. It's going to suggest similar materials. Um, this record's not a very good one, very basic. Um, Questions on any of that so far? Any of these things? Oh, we're good, we're all there. Telling you guys something you already know. Um, to me, the magic of this and the magic of open source software is you can dream something up and figure out how to, how to make it happen. Or maybe someone else is, is, and this happens a lot of times, someone else is working on the same problem solution that you are. Um, one of the next things we're going to do with the, the web builder is I have these featured, featured resources, featured services. Um, we can highlight these. You can use to a degree, um, ask them to help you authenticate your patrons. And, and um, if it's a paid resource, you can put them behind, behind a sign-in. Um, so you can, you can do that. You can have web pages that are only available viewable by internal audiences. 
um, like our movie night. I don't know how many of you do movies. And if you use Swank or Motion Picture Licensing Corporation in America, a lot of times they have that clause in there that you can't advertise the movie outside of the building. And then it's like, well, what's the point? Um, so in the spirit of that, to try and honor the spirit of that, we made it so that authenticated users, so just our patrons, can see what movie's coming up this Friday and watch the trailer for it and get that information outside the building. Um, if I'm not signed in and I click on that same link, it's going to say, oops, um, you must be signed in to access this page. Um, this is my patron account, so I'm not violating any state privacy laws because it's me. Um, it, um, if I'm logged in as a patron, again, this, this works mobile. It's, it's optimized for both mobile and um, computer views, tablet views. It's responsive. It gives me an overview of what I have checked out, what I have from um, any of the e-content vendors um, and, and recommendations. And Aspen looks at a variety of things, mark records, information um, to produce that. And Mark's happy to share the code with anyone that really wants to get into that one. Um, but on my checkout screen, um, I've got a title from Over. Drive, I've got one from Hoopla, and then I have some uh, physical items. And one of our long-term goals is just to make it so that patrons don't have to care or even know what vendor something came from. That's That was in that notebook that's on the long-term plan. Um, but we, we rely on these vendors for a lot of information and to standardize a lot of that metadata and to make these tools available. Um, but to the extent possible, um, Aspen Discovery and those working on it have gotten us there. Not done, but in that direction. Um, come back here. These files. Um, genealogy. Anyone do have genealogy users in their communities? Anyone's libraries involved in that area? Well, mine is to a degree. Um, so this is one of those other projects that we had going. We had Eagle Scouts, um, Daughters of the Utah Pioneers groups, that's a thing in Utah. Uh, who would go out and who would index the local cemeteries, sometimes take pictures of the headstones, clip obituaries, note that down. And, and there have been a lot of different databases and tools those have lived in over the years. Now, a lot of that content is in, in Aspen. So um, if I've got a picture, it'll show up. Um, this was Julie. She was one of our beloved librarians, passed away recently. Um, she likes to haunt me, so I figured it's only appropriate to, to use, use her as an example. Um, but you can upload, you can upload a photo if you have it, the genealogical information, obituaries. Um, if you're logged in, I'm going to sign out here. I'm going to go back into my staff account for a moment. So if I'm an authorized user or volunteer who's got permissions and I'm entering a new um, um, one, one of the things that we have a, a staff member do is she she goes through the obituary websites locally and she'll manually for now harvest that information though i'm sure we could get aspen to do that um, but she'll manually search that person's name and in this case um, 
let's say Barney Fife is the one that passed away. And if he's not in there, it'll give me the option to add someone new. And, and I can simply put that information in there. There's no special other place to go. If you have a big batch of data um, and you're one of Biowater's partners at Aspen, you can submit a ticket and they can help you massage that data into Aspen so you don't have to manually enter it. Or if it's um, in another database, you know, you can, you can talk to them. But anything that's OAI, what is it, OAI PMH compliant um, will, um, you know, you can index that kind of stuff. We indexed a couple of websites. Our teen website and our regional history website haven't fully uh, come over to, to Aspen. That's, we're in the process of migrating those. Um, so this will let people search those existing other websites right now. Um, one of the developments we sponsored was um, event integration, calendar integration. So we use a product from Library Market on the background and um, it pulls that, mentioned some of this, but this is how it looks like on the monthly view. Um, and then if I click into any of these, it'll take me to an RK Library Market where I can um, sign up for that or I can learn more. Um, hey Sam, yeah? it looks like the screen share locked up. Can you um, reshare it? We're just seeing the the slides, and it doesn't sound like that's what you're showing. Oh, thank you. Um, is that better? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. The hybrid world we live in. Um. One other thing that's amazing about this is there's no there's no licensing fees. Um, we sponsor some of these developments, others have sponsored others. As soon as they're in there, anyone can, can benefit from them. Um, there is an Aspen Discovery app, which I think you'll hear some more about tomorrow. Uh, so I'm not going to get into that. But um, if you want to do something out an outreach site or a pop-up library, as long as you've got the internet, you're set, you can do it. Um, just wanted to show quickly... Um, oh, let's see. Um, I don't know what to search for, so I'm just going to do a blank search in events. So I don't know what I'm interested in per se, but I do know that I want something for um, grown-ups. Is it still working? Sharing? Okay. Um, Anyway, you can get in there and um, look at those things. Um, the explore more bar, if it finds a related search, which I'm, okay, this one had the keyword of adult. I, I could click, click in here and find out why these things showed up. Um, blood drive, I, I think we're getting getting there on time um, pretty soon. So um, one, one final thing that, that I'll mention is, um, there's a lot of us use different terminology for the same or similar things. So we have like two main ways of getting in. There's home, which comes to our website per se. Um, even though it's living with our catalog, a lot of our patrons and the search is built in on like every page. A lot of our patrons were like, how do I get to the catalog? I didn't think it would be an issue, it was. And so we, um, we had this link that said browse, which apparent with the open book, um, which didn't quite do it. And so um, you can, if you have Uber permissions here, not everyone does, um, and I probably shouldn't because I keep messing this up, <laughs> but you can enter a translation mode and um, you can, you can change terminology and things, and I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to put a support ticket in in two minutes. Um, 
but I recently this one said browse. I changed that to catalog, um, which which comes to this this page. Um, I didn't really get into browse categories, but I think most people in this room are fairly familiar with them. It's kind of like that collection spotlight idea. Um, you can do these off of lists that you create or um, like award winner lists. Um, so they can be auto-generated or manually generated. Um, and then sometimes, Sometimes you come across things that expose issues in your underlying ILS and cataloging, like, like this one. Um, so we, we have it set up in Koha where we have new movie, you know, new DVD types. They're supposed to automatically change to a different type at a set number of days. And then you, you find out that, oh, this one hasn't changed over. What's going on? And so it's kind of been a beneficial tool to clean up things that patrons were probably facing when they did searches, but but we just don't pay that much attention to. Oh, the system's behaving like it should, maybe. Um, but again, that's probably user error. Any questions? Um, so you have had no use of the data for at right? Uh, yeah, so the question was, um, did we have a discovery layer before Aspen? No, we had Koha. We had our other, we couldn't afford anything. We reached out to another leading event, leading vendor who replied, you're too small. Um, and, and I should state we have about 30,000 patron, 30,000 cards in a county of the population that about matches our number of card holders. Um, so for example, the way you Our, we we basically had a un um, unedited un well heck let me bring it up I can spell it from libraries.org thank you Bing um, so this is our our Koha OPAC we share it with a couple other systems is very very basic um, we didn't ever get into a lot of customization. Um, part of that was lack of internal technical ability, but not to put it delicately, we didn't have anyone complain when we switched. Uh, we didn't make an, an effort to have any kind of transition where it sort of looks this way and then it doesn't. We basically, um, and Mark can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we, we picked a date and said, all right, we'll just have the you know, IP addresses resolved to the new place on this date. Um, and then I watched and I, I had the staff watching our OPACs. I had them, you know, of course, paying attention to help us. We didn't do any big informational campaign about things. And that was actually intentional. We wanted to just see what would happen. Because if the, if the idea is that this is user-friendly and if you have a basic level of web savvy, you should be able to do this, then the library shouldn't have to offer classes on it. That was like the whole point for me. Um, and we've had a very few number of people in, in a, two years now that have been lost in this, apart from some of that terminology thing, the <laughs> catalog versus browse. And so some of those things have changed. Um, trying to think back through some of our tickets um, and things with, that's really about it. We've been very pleased. Um, uh, Bywater, Mark, it, it's a growing community. It, I mean, you saw that it, it really did start out with a LinkedIn message and a couple of sketches in, in both of our notebooks. Um, and this whole Aspen Discovery community has been built virtually 
um, I this is the first time I've seen Mark in person since 2013-ish in Grand Junction at a conference we were both at, um, which is, I think, a, a testament to the kind of community that you can build nowadays. And we went from that to in two years. Show me again how many of you are going to be involved in Aspen in some way going forward, or your libraries are. You know, that's beyond our wildest dreams. And um, But thank you so much for your time. Um, and the opportunity to present to you. A any final questions before I? I have, well, I guess more of a comment. I, I like that there's a one stop shop here where our pages right now have to go to our catalog and then they have to go to our website. Then they have to go to a library calendar. And it's like three different websites that they need to go to and not even seamlessly like this. Like they have to make their way there. Um, so did, I know your patrons apparently had a hard time finding the browse question. Because you have it three times in the same, right? Like there's three ways to look for a book just right yeah. there. Yeah. Like that's home catalog and, so and the kids did not have trouble. It's not at all. <laughs> were, there, were there any positive comments about having it all in one place? You know, we, we, we had a lot. The thing that I hear most of all is I didn't know the library had this. Um, I, I'm going to sign in just to show you one more thing. So Aspen keeps some pretty good statistics. Um, all right. Come back in here. Okay. Whoops. What did I do? I went into my my account instead of Aspen Admin. I'm not using a mouse. I'm a mouse user normally. I use a mouse. <laughs> the lame things we say to stall for time as we're talk talking. Um, so there are three little counties um, in in uh, northeast Utah. Um, did pretty well with our, our hits and usage for us. Um, our page views. You can see page views by authenticated users. Again, this is consortia wide. Oh, those pesky bots counted for a good percentage, but not all of it. Um, and we're able to find out, okay, user lists are not, um, we, we haven't really promoted those. We don't have a lot of those. This, this could be all over the place. Events get searched a little bit. Um, genealogy gets searched, you know, in aggregate quite a few. Um, this summertime isn't usually when people are doing genealogy research where I live, apparently. Um, and some of the different different searches, um, and then I can I can break that down by location, and and if I want to do it specifically by what front door they came in, uh, Wasatch Library is one of our partners. Um, you know, so their their use accounted for a good chunk of the monthly um, authenticated users, and the smallest. Library in our group. This and so within our consortium, two libraries. There are three three library systems, two of which are using uh, Aspen for basically the patrons' complete interface with the library website and everything else. It's us and Wasatch. Um, Duchesne is is not. They're using Aspen for the catalog features, but. Um, Duchesne is, is the, the smaller one, and, and even then, um, you know, anyway. Anyway, we're very pleased that this has come as far as it has, that um, it grows every month. There's a regular release schedule. Um, close those, I think. Um, oh. Um, for those that want to know how to get involved, um, you can go into the conference site and I've got that slide posted and you'll hear a little bit more about how to get involved. And we have a Slack channel. Um, we've got regular Zoom meetings, with the community and users group, and you can access that information. But as with all of this, um, it's only as good as we make it. So if you've got ideas and refinements. And I, I heard earlier today that 
you know, someone was talking about, and they're probably in this room, a staff member that was going around and their system uses rounded buttons on, on everything. And well, guess what? By the end of the week, the ability to choose from rounded buttons or square buttons will be a setting that you can choose from. There will be a new class, so likely, and, and hopefully I'm not over-promising that because I don't really know I'm spitballing here. But it's that kind of thing, and I think I just figured out who's doing that now. Congratulations, and thank you for bringing up the uh, idea. Anything else? Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sam. Um, there weren't any other questions from the YouTube chat, except someone asked you to repeat the questions and I didn't get that stuck in in time, but um, I think we got the gist of it, hopefully. Yeah, check it out. Um, our site's uintalibrary.org, Google us, um, and then Bywater site, I believe has a model that you can get on and take a look at.